Three men are recovering this morning after they were shot on 14th and Montana Avenue at around 1030 last night. Jess Arnold is live at the scene of that shooting, working to get more information. And Jess, do we know how these three people are doing their conditions this morning? Yeah, our desk spoke with police just less than two hours ago. They said that one man is still in critical condition. The other two, however, are in non-critical condition again as of about two hours ago. Now, evidence teams out here at the scene just left within the last 30 to 45 minutes. We're here at Saratoga and Montana Avenues Northeast. Let me give you a quick look at the scene as we're seeing it here early this morning. Now, we're going to give you a look at some footage from right after the shooting happened last night. Again, that's about six hours ago. Police say shooting was called in around 1030 last night near the intersection of 14th and Montana Avenue Northeast. Now, when they arrived, they found three men with gunshot wounds. One was not breathing at the time, but again, at last check, all three are still alive, one remaining in critical condition. Now, police said they also found 30 plus shell casings around the scene throughout the night, and they tell us some cars and buildings were even hit by bullets. Now, as you can see, there are still police out here. Some of these roads are still blocked off, so we'll, of course, continue to update that for anyone who has to leave out for work in a bit, but homicide detectives were also called to the scene last night. Again, we're still not confirming whether or not there was a homicide in this case. As of now, all three men are still alive and recovering in the hospital, and we still don't have any information from police about any suspects. So, of course, when we get that info, we'll pass it along to you. At approximately 10.36 p.m. Tuesday, Metropolitan Police Department officers responded to the 1400 block of Saratoga Avenue Northeast after receiving a report of a shooting. When they arrived, officers located three adult males suffering from apparent gunshot wounds. DC Fire and DMS arrived on scene and transported the men to local hospitals, where one of the men, identified as 21-year-old Javon Jones of Southeast DC, later died. Jones, a local rapper, was also known by his stage name, Semi Homie. The two other men were treated for non-life-threatening gunshot wounds. No suspects have been publicly identified at this time. The MPD offers rewards up to $25,000 for information linked to arrests and convictions for homicides committed within the district. As always, if you have a tip, call 1-866-411-TIPS, that's 866-418-477, or text your tip to 504-11. Today we will discuss the story of Javon Jones, also known as Semi Homie. Homie was a rapper from the Saratoga Northeast section of DC, who was cool with rappers from the cruddy. Early last year, the Cruddy and Saratoga would go on a bagging spree starting with rapper Lou Lifer. They would confiscate his no lacking chain, and it would go on tour from neck to neck around both Saratoga and the Cruddy. I believe the chain would end up being giving to the Cruddy after Homie passes, and they would sell it. The Lifer incident would also be caught on surveillance. The video shows Lifer's car backing in, and as he parks another car, pulls right in front of him, and multiple suspects hop out. Confiscating the chain, I briefly discussed these events in Rappers and People That Got Bagged, Part 1. After the lifer situation, the Cruddy and Saratoga would come up on another chain after they have a female send out a tweet to see who would take the bait, and someone would bite. That someone would be rapper Moneybag KZ. He would pull up on the girl with 60,000 cash a Drake, a blat, Cardi glasses, and his Nefa chain. As he goes to the bathroom to prepare to take her to Pound Town, she would vanish with all his belongings. An angry KZ would go to Twitter to address the situation saying, I see why females be checking out. And he would follow up with, wearing something a female took you look weak, you ain't even hit the move. And he would say, I'm up a new quarter million, I can't trip. Only a few days later, things would start to look good for KZ because, allegedly, Boo Wop from Simp would buy his chain back for him, but only the pendant and not the chain with it. And word on the street is that KZ filed a police report for insurance purposes. And another thing that happened only five days later on February 21st, Homie would also pass and KZ would go on live with rapper JG Wardy to drag on Homie. Look at him. Look at him. Now you got 10 o'clock curfew. Look at him, though. That don't look like a slider jump. Hey, that's a slider. Why they don't bother you like that? Hey, who that?
Why, why they pulling bucket you though? Hey, who that? Open the window. Oh. What? Hey, hey, I'm hey, hey, so much. hey, 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 Z, I tell you, listen, don't come to this motherfucker too fast or too slow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you got to do it right, right miles per hour, yeah. Right, a good, a good mile, 25, yeah. Hey, what's up? Sure. Oh, I, I, you know me, man. You know me, man. You feel good? I know you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. Hey, Lord, that's that nigga. Hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 this I'm been up like that for two hours. Up there, yeah. This been right there for a minute. I'm a stop. Another stop. This hit this mouth. Hey, Come what's on, up with y'all? We out here. You the police? Hey, we out here. I'm sadly. What's the word? It feel good. Hey, taste the air. Can't taste the air, can <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he said, hey, he's smoking. That's, that's tough, yeah. <laughs> taste the air. <laughs> Hey, take the air. Take the air. Shit tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bro. bro. Hey, bro. Hey, hey, fuck with you, bro. Get off my line, bro. Hey, yeah, I'm going to go bro. <laughs> <laughs> After Homie passes, KZ would relentlessly drag on Homie every day, and the one of the people who dragged on KZ for getting bagged would be Loso from Southwest. Loso would text KZ after he gets robbed saying bird ass nigga and he would quote a homie lyric then KZ follows up with I heard you try to buy the chain. Loso would respond you know I'm about to get that. But time would go by and KZ affiliates would catch Loso, baby mama with her kids and bag her for Loso chain. She would go on Instagram and respond to the situation. I have nothing to do with happened last night is weird. You talking about what somebody ain't do when I got, I got about eight, five, one, two kids with me. Understand that. And guess what? When I got pissed, since ain't nobody do nothing, they're dropping like flies. And I, when you speak on something, you need to speak on it and make sure you be state in fact when you speak on that. Keep my name out your mouth. I try to avoid everything all fucking night. Literally, I tried to avoid the whole situation the entire fucking night. Everybody want to be Billy Badass and shit happens. So keep my name out my mouth. One thing about me, I hold my own. I don't and one more thing about me being p I hold my ground. Guess what? I hold my ground. It took eight to take a chain off my mother neck. And I still ain't had to do nobody, not a soul. You wanted, you had to get it. And that's why it happened the way it happened. Cause think you're gonna get something up on me you better make sure you get it the proper way because i'm handing over nothing after this time goes by and kz would pass away after being set up by his own cousin after he would give her a ride to a hotel he was staying at on allentown road she would leave a room key under the back tire of kz car and the suspects would get the key and go enter the room to bag kz but he wasn't going, and the suspect and KZ would hit each other up multiple times. The suspect would pass on the scene, and KZ passes at the hospital. The suspect would be later identified as Risque Luck from Hilltop, who used to be cool with KZ, brother Lil Neff. Lil Neff passed away years back after going on a move, and it would go left. KZ cousin and another suspect would be later arrested for this incident. Now for the last topic, we will get into the homie paperwork. A witness identified the suspects as suspect one, Justin Barum, date of birth, August 17th, 1989, and suspect two, Jerome Dukes, date of birth, January 26th, 1990. In this picture, homie is standing next to suspect two after being grabbed and pushed to his current location. Suspect two is also seen with an ARP in hand. Suspect 1 is pointing an iron at Homie and is forcing him to get on his knees. 
As Homie gets on the ground, an unknown person intervenes to help Homie and Suspect One confronts him. As this is happening, Homie gets up and runs towards Montana Ave. As Homie begins running, both suspects begin to start hitting at Homie and the unknown person in a different camera angle Homie is seen running and falling to the ground a few times before coming to rest at a corner on Saratoga and Montana Ave. After this, both suspects would hop in that ride and leave at high rates of speed. People would start sending in anonymous tips to law enforcement saying, both suspects are hiding out Benning Road Northeast, I seen them. And another saying both suspects are hiding at Jermaine Duke's house. In Northeast, while Jermaine is on house arrest, Calls would also come in saying they did that to Homie because they were jealous. There was also footage of both the suspects around Saratoga earlier that day in the same cars they used in Homie case. This is the end of the semi-Homie story. Like, comment, subscribe, and let me know who I should do next. Follow Stroffing DMV on Instagram.